One of my favorite dishes in there, the one I'm asked to do more than anything, is bread and butter pudding. And that was Princess Diana's all time favorite. That took us like six minutes, seven minutes to make it. Easy to make, right? Yeah, that was amazing. And two minutes to eat. <laughs> two minutes to eat, yes. <laughs> what makes for a great chef? So one thing I love, listen, my friends will say, Pat's very simple, give him good food and he's happy. So I decided to bring back my friend Darren McGrady. It's great to have you in our home here. Nice to be back. Yes. yes. We had a good time. The party was we good. We really did. But we were yeah. kind of putting a lot of attention into the guests. Yeah. Today, we're going to put the attention into food and into the belly, right? I love because that. We yes. want to see what we can cook together. If you don't know this man, he's cooked for Princess Diana. He's cooked for the Queen. You've been on the Oprah Winfrey show. Weren't you with Princess Diana for like four years or Princess something? Princess Diana for four years, right until the car accident. 11 years with the Queen at Buckingham Palace. Cooked for President Reagan, Clinton, Ford, both Presidents Bush. And then we're going to save the best to last. That's right, right. That's right. And today, for Patrick May, David Value, Timmy, you're going to be able to see the recipe. So, you mind if we look at your new sure. book that just came out and decide what we want to come out with? The Royal Chef. These are your like secret recipes that everybody has access to. These right? are, Providence. yeah. This one just came out. So, these are uh, recipes uh, from my 20 years that I've been here now. Uh, these are recipes for every single season, every single event, you know, whether it's a garden party or 4th of July or Thanksgiving, Easter, every single That's cool. holiday, there's something to cook in there. 4th um, of July fireworks fiesta. So you're specifically saying, here's what you could make on this day with everything being in there lined up. These are foolproof recipes. So we have this habit uh, when we, we have friends and over uh, of, of going to those tried and tested recipes. And it's the same old, same old. What I'm saying is, well, next time it's one of those holidays, whichever one it is, whether it's March Madness, this whether it's great. Spring Break I or Mardi this. Gras, uh, go to this and these are foolproof recipes. These are recipes I've been cooking for 20 years now. So what are we gonna be doing today? What's the recipe today? Today, what I want to do is one recipe from this book okay. and then one recipe from my first book. The first book, Eating Royally, uh, which is the name of my catering company in Dallas, uh, is uh, about my sort of 15 years with the royal family. And one of my favorite dishes in there, the one I'm asked to do more than anything, is bread and butter pudding. And that was Princess Diana's all time favorite. Bread so, and butter pudding. Yeah, so it's it's not like the, the bread pudding that you have here, which is sort of really thick and really mm -hmm. stodgy. It's like a cross between a bread pudding and a creme brulee. Uh, and the reason being is because we just use egg yolks in there. And then it has raisins soaked in amaretto, the almond liqueur, which sort of takes it to that next level. So am I going to be able to do what you're doing? Like, can you teach me on how to make this? Maybe not as good as you, but can I make it? Ah, uh, if I can do it, you can do it. I, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to roll up my sleeves. Sure. And we'll get right into it. So the dish we're making today, I heard lamb curry, we, something like yeah, that. Yeah, so we'll do the bread and butter pudding okay. from the first, uh, the first cookbook. And then we'll do the lamb curry uh, because I wanted to sort of, I have one section on curries. Um, Prince Harry loves curries in the UK and so I have one section just on different types of curries so we're doing an English version of that well I'm a diehard okay. curry guy so I love curry so oh this is, this this is, is an English one this will be a this is an English this is yeah. a different one yeah okay well let's get right into it okay so let's start off with the bread and butter pudding okay and the bread and butter pudding we start off with just egg yolks in there as I said no whole eggs so that okay. makes it slightly different uh, into that we're going to add some cream and some milk, but we need to boil them first. Then we've got the egg yolks there and some sugar going in there as well. It's a lot of sugar. It's about a teaspoon, right? It's a good size teaspoon, right? Sugar. <laughs> we, we really do eat well in the UK, but we die about 25. And then once this milk and cream comes to the boil, then we're going to pour that into there. And while we're waiting for that to come to the boil, We'll start with the bread in the bottom. And this again is where it's different. The American version of the bread and butter pudding is where they just start piling up all that bread. Mm -hmm. And once it's cooked, you can actually slice it. So you get the best part, because this is my favorite part of bread that I shouldn't be eating, but. <laughs> this was Princess Diana's favorite, and she'd just eat it in small portions. Once you taste it, you'll see why she loved it wow, so I like much. That. Uh, now, can I try once? Yeah. All? By the way, our dogs will eat these four pieces, no problem. <laughs> then I noticed the way you did it, you just kind of uh, spread it right on yeah. the plate. Yeah, and don't worry if it tears, it's going in the bottom of the dish, you won't see. Okay, so you grab this and then you just sprinkle that all sprinkle the way along the bottom. Okay. 
And then on top of that, we've got the raisins soaked in amaretto. Okay. Um, and I did those about half an hour ago because I want them to really plump nice. up. Uh, so you want about half of those in here on the top if you want to sprinkle those on. With my hands or just Yeah, you can you, you with your hands. Yeah, okay. you just wash your hands. Half of them in there. I like it. So what is it mixed with? What is this mixed with, you said? This is, this is amaretto, the okay. almond liqueur. Now, if you're cooking this for, you know, for the kids, uh, you can use just orange juice in there instead. What we're trying to do is hydrate those raisins to make it really tasty. Okay. But when we're just cooking for me and you, I want to add a little of this amaretto into there. We put our next layer on there, so we go back to our bread again, and this time we're actually going to slice it, the crusts off, and this time, this is what makes it different, what makes it English, is we actually use butter. So we take some soft butter and actually butter the bread. So it's a bread and butter pudding. And then those we go into half uh, using unsalted butter on there. Unsalted butter? Yeah. What's the reason for that? Uh, we don't want the salty flavor to come okay. through. So that's why we prefer to use unsalted in there. And then those one cutting it. just in half. Okay. Um, on the angle like these. Nice. Pretty. Right. And now the milk's coming to the boil, the milk and cream. So if you want to pour that into there for me and I'll whisk. So we've got the egg yolks, the sugar, cream and milk in there now. You can smell it, by the way. Doesn't it smell yeah, good? Yeah, you smell it. It smells amazing. Yeah. And then the next stage, carefully, we just want to pour this mixture into our bread mix. Carefully. Uh, let's see if we can do this carefully. And this thing's pretty hot, so it's... It is, yeah. Am I putting it over the bread or it doesn't matter? All over, yeah. <laughs> you smell that vanilla. That's mm. probably about enough. We got it all in. Then it's going to go into the oven, 350 degrees, for about 30 minutes or so. Okay. We just keep an eye on it. We want it to jiggle so that it's not sort of too overcooked. If you're familiar with cooking like a creme brulee or something, that's the consistency we're looking for. We don't want to overcook it. So I'm going to put this in the oven now. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. So that was it. That took us like six minutes, seven minutes to make it. Easy to make, right? Yeah, that was amazing. And two minutes to eat. Two minutes to eat, <laughs> yes. While that's cooking in the oven, why don't we make the lamb curry? Let's do it. Okay. So how was it like working with uh, Princess Diana and you know working with uh, the Queen for that entire time you were with them? The first 11 years I was working with the Queen at Buckingham Palace and traveling around the world with her wherever she went to Sandringham, Windsor, Balmoral. Uh, the Royal Yacht Britannia, wherever it was in the world as well. And it was the most incredible time. That's where I got to cook for um, all the different kings, queens and presidents. And uh, everything was very formal. Uh, but it was an incredible experience in the sense that uh, the food had to be amazing. Everything had to be perfect. The china was sort of mice and china from the 1900s. Beautiful hand-painted china. Wow. And everything was run to military precision. When I moved to Princess Diana, it was much more relaxed. And for her, she would come in the kitchen all the time and bring the boys in. And I held Prince Harry as a baby while Princess Diana was eating cereals in the kitchen. It's like, literally, I've got the crown jewels in my hand there. <laughs> okay, so this is looking good, Darren. Can you tell us what we have here? So this is just a little preparation ahead of time okay. um, for our curry. Curry is super popular in the UK. In fact, uh, chicken tikka masala is the UK's favorite dish now. It used to be fish and chips in the really? old days, uh, but the tikka masala is the favorite. Now that's slightly different from the old English style curry. And this uh, curry is one that's sort of been made in, in England for hundreds of years now. It comes from that sort of India when we sort of had the empire. And so- Can I smell it? We, yeah, sure. So we have a, a curry powder, which is a ready-made mix, just for the UK and, and the US now too. And there's sort of a turmeric in there. And this is very similar uh, to the garam masala, uh, which they use in a lot of the Indian cooking yes. too. This is a lot milder curry, uh, but it's sort of a nice creamy sauce. And in the UK, we'll do this with sort of chicken, we'll do this with lamb, uh, and sometimes beef as well, and it's super popular. And then with that, I'm doing some rice, which is super easy to make. When I'm cooking rice, it always gets sticky or overcooked. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the thing with rice is you do equal amounts of the rice. Uh, uh, so you do uh, two to one with the rice and, and the, the water, and then that just comes two out to one, perfect. Two to one, two water, two, two water, one of the rice. Two one of the okay, rice, yeah. It. And then what do we have here? What's this? And then here's some uh, chicken bouillon, some broth, which is going to uh, flavor the curry sauce. Okay. Uh, and then I've got, we're doing a lamb curry today. That's what I've got in my, I in like my book. We're going to start off uh, by uh, getting the rice on the go. So I want a little oil in the pan. And then I'm going to put my rice in there. And then I'm actually coating the rice in that little bit of oil. And once that's in, I can add my water. Give that a stir. So what we do is bring that water or broth, whichever you want to use mm -hmm. to the boil. Once it comes to the boil, we then turn it down low and pop a lid on it. And then we leave it for 18 minutes. 18 um, minutes. 18 minutes. Okay. Has to be 18. Very never, precise, huh? Exactly, minutes. yeah. Never lift the lid. If you lift the lid, the steam starts shooting out and we need that steam to sort of open those rice granules. Now, why 18 minutes? Is That's it? the perfect timing. On, on opening the rice granules in this. We've done so many tests on wow, it. Wow, interesting. Uh, 20 Dar minutes too long. Darren, let, let me ask you, what makes for a great chef? Like how much math has to do with being a great chef? When I was at uh, school, uh, I, I knew I wanted to be a chef and I thought, um, okay, uh, I want to be a chef. I don't need English. I don't need math. All I need to do is cooking and that's all. And I went for so long doing all of the I'm not interested in the math, interested in the English. Until my mother, who was also um, a cook at a local hotel, she said, um, what happens when you're writing menus and recipes? What happens when you're uh, timing recipes and you've got to do two times the recipe and things? I thought, I may need to start knuckling down and learning how to do math and English. Um, so that's super important in there now too for sort of working out those uh, times the recipes. So math came uh, next. You first math, had the passion, then the, the math passion, showed up. The passion and then the math and then the English uh, came in that, yeah, you know, I need to do that. And that came in later too for writing the book. It's like, yikes, we need to do. <laughs> <laughs> Once it comes to the boil, we we'll turn it down low, pop the lid on. So 18 minutes from the moment the lid goes on? The lid on? goes okay. on, Got yeah. It. And then in the meantime, we'll start the curry. Gonna chop the onion. Just using that center part there. Well, you got you got rid of most of it, haven't I? Just those outside okay. pieces. I just want these nice pieces there. And then I'm just going to chop this. And the thing with chopping, it's important that you go down your knuckle when you're chopping. Keep those fingernails tucked go away. Go down the knuckle. Yeah. So you can see there as yep. I'm cutting yep. down. My finger. Is it angled a little bit or just, no? No, straight down it. there. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so that when you're chopping, and most people are sort of cutting yep. like this, yep. and those fingernails. Can I like, try? Ouch, ouch, sure. Okay, yeah. so you're a lefty. I'm a lefty. Right, I'm a righty. Yeah. So okay. you're doing this. Yes, down there. Okay, yeah. so my style, let me see, the way I typically do this like this. Ooh, so you're those saying fingers. don't do it. No, no, that's no. That's why I'm not No. no. <laughs> okay, so. Now, how do you keep them though? Is it like this or no? What you can do now is take this part and turn it this way and then cut down. Same thing? Yeah. And then you don't do anything to it like this? We can go in not? half, yeah, that way too. Again, I... Okay. Yeah. And this is rustic as well. You know, we're not doing sort of a, a fine, fine chop or anything like that. This is a rustic one. So that's boiling, lid on, turn it down low. On low. And yeah, so that's okay. down low now. So we need to time that for 18 minutes and then we'll be good. And in the meantime, we can start the curry. Got the 18 minutes started? All right, let's do this. Clock, 18 minutes. Okay. There we go. Okay, the timer's on. Excellent. Okay. Okay, so while that, we're waiting for the rice, then we can take our onion and pop that in there. Now, you don't really worry about splitting up the onions that are like, no, just leave them the way No, once we start is. stirring away, it'll, that'll it'll, be okay, fine. Got it. Yeah. And then we can take our lamb, and I've got some leg of lamb that I've just sliced. Okay. It's gonna be a little bit easier. And all I want from this is sort of little bite-sized pieces. Got it. And leave some of that fat on there too, because I mean, that's that what gives makes you the it, flavor, right? Yes. right? Yeah, it really does. Washington Post came out with an article yesterday saying it's not fat that's bad for you, it's carbs. I think so. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. I think bread is probably one of the worst exactly things we have. That's exactly what they said. It says bread really? is a, Yeah. Yeah, I, so I think it is. I think if you were saying I want to lose weight, I want to start healthy eating, I'd say give up bread 
for a week, it'll make a difference. You'll lose guaranteed two or three pounds. But in not a week. today, because today we're having bread pudding. Today we're so having today's, bread pudding. Listen, today's yeah. our off day. Yeah. So don't judge us today when we're having a bread pudding. <laughs> no, I think the fat's good. And, and in moderation, I think all of it's good in moderation. So it's looking good. Then we can put our lamb in there too. Okay. And if you want to get the wooden spoon and give that a stir yep. around. I don't know about you guys, I haven't eaten anything since this morning and this is looking incredibly good right now. This is like legit here. So once you stirred all that in, then I'm going to put some curry powder in there. Lots of curry powder. Ooh. And then some flour in there which will just bind it. You can smell it, it's so Can't strong. You? It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And then we can stir those around again. Stir that mix in. Mm. So now I'll add some water in there. You know, a lot of people say, well, why are you putting water in and not chicken broth or something if you want to give that a stir? I like to do my own flavor, my own strengths when it comes to broths. You know, if you put a broth in there, it could be, well, it's not very weak or mm. it's too strong. So I like to use some bouillon, some chicken bouillon. I can add more if I need, and the same as the curry powder. When we taste it later, we can add more if we need. Got it. So that's going to sit on the stove now, wait for it to come to the boil, and then we'll turn it down and let it simmer. Same 18 minutes or no? This one's going to take a little bit longer. Okay. This will take about 25, 30 minutes. Once the rice is cooked, we'll take that to one side, uh, let that cool down a little, and then the lamb should be ready. And then it's magic. So as this comes to the boil, it starts to thicken. It opens up that starch granules in the flour, and then we'll have a nice thick sauce. Is that going to get thick or it's not going to be? Is it It'll going to be like It'll start to a... get thick. Yeah, okay. It's not too thick, but it's... it starts to get thick. Yeah. So it's going to get thick. It's, it's going to get thick a little right bit now. thicker. Got That's it. what we put the flour in All right. for. Yeah. Good. One of the problems with the Indian restaurants over here catering to the masses is they'll make a big pot of curry sauce and then they'll cook goat separate, they'll cook chicken separate, they'll cook lamb separate. And then when somebody wants it, they put a ladle of sauce over that cooked lamb, over that cooked chicken, and it never takes on the flavor. You know, the traditional homemaker that's cooking this in small kitchens, they will actually start with the lamb and they let it marinate in there and let it cook through Got and it. all those flavors go Now, in. can you tell that apart? Like when you go to a restaurant, do you know that they're doing that or they're not Every doing time. that? Every time. Every time. Yeah, you can taste it. If you're in India and you're trying those dishes or someone that's cooking the authentic dishes, you can, when you bite into the lamb, you can really taste that flavor of the curry all the way through. Whereas, you know, you're just tasting lamb or chicken with a little curry sauce on the side uh, in the way some of the restaurants do it. See that's coming together now, yes. that's starting to thicken. We just leave that, turn it down a little and let it simmer away. That smells the house, eh? it's just gorgeous. It's just, I love doing this dish in the fall. Uh, we, you know, we go out and it's freezing cold and then we come back and you can smell the curry cooking and then a big bowl of rice with some curry over the top. It's just great. You know, my dad used to say when we were growing up in Iran, he would always say, to keep the kids away from causing trouble, yes. always have the home smell like good food. Because kids will always come home. That makes we always sense. talk about this. Yeah. If, if, if there's a smell of food at the house, kids won't leave. They'll always come to your home. Yeah, kids are always hungry, right? Yeah. So they want to come to good and food. And then if they have a parent that cooks good, they're always around, <laughs> right? If they don't, they're like, Mom, I gotta yeah. go somewhere. Yeah. I gotta meet yeah. you, you know? And all their friends too. They yeah. bring all their friends. Well, I think the bread pudding's done. I, I can smell when it's cooked. I can, I can smell. Can you smell it? Yes, yeah. I can, yes. Let's check. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. We want it nice and firm on the top and jiggly underneath. Firm? Yeah. So that's, oh, wow. that's just what we're looking for. Okay, so are we actually going to be able to eat this or are we just going to look how pretty it is? I think we should eat it. I think we should yeah. eat it. I think yeah. we should. But let's just check the inside first. Let's. I want to show you. When I cut into it, you see there's liquid in the mm -hmm. bottom there. You see there's still some is liquid. Is that good? That's good. That's what we're looking for. Okay. This is what I mean about sort of not taking it out too early. By just using the egg yolks in there, you create your own light custard sauce. So when that sits there now, by the time we actually sit down and eat, that will all have come together. So we'll have the bread pudding and a little sauce to go with it, all in one dish. Oh Easy. Oh my gosh. So that's the sauce in the middle right now. Yeah, so we've got it nice and firm here. We've got it a little bit runny on the inside, but we'll leave that and the residual heat will just keep that cooking. It's pulling me. It's saying, don't listen to Darren, <laughs> just take a bite. But it's an eat me, eat yeah, me, Yeah, it's right? just saying it. So, by the way, it feels like jello, just so you know, look at this. Yeah, that's There's what we There's a jello factor to yeah. it. 
We don't want it too firm. If it goes too firm, what happens is the, the eggs start contracting and you actually squeeze out all the liquid and it just makes it really nasty. So it's about timing. It's the yes. 18 minutes. It's all about timing, yeah. So rice is um, about five minutes or so away. Doesn't it smell good? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. This is the, the benefit of actually cooking that lamb in the sauce. You really get the flavor. Oh. Rice time. There we go. Rice time it is. Let's check on this rice. You see how all the liquid is absorbed mm -hmm. into the rice now, and when we just move it a little bit, it's all nice and flaky, and it's foolproof every time. 18 minutes, that's all it takes. Into there, a little salt to season the rice. Wow. This is like, you know, cooking is almost teasing though. How do you cook and you smell it and you're not like jumping the gun, you know, it's like, I want to take a bite right the now. The worst things are things that, you know, take a long time. If you're doing a steak, you can say, yeah. oh, this is so good. It's looking good. I'm ready. Eat it. Yeah. It's when you're doing things like curries that are like, come on, come on. It's been hours. You it's know? almost like the, the yeah. preparation of the food is the foreplay aspect of cooking. Would In you it, agree? Yeah, it's like, I think it's so. It's like foreplay. I think so. Okay. All right. And my wife doesn't like that. My wife likes to go straight in and eat. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Your wife and I have something in common. So. <laughs> I hope you're hungry. Oh my goodness. And then a little cilantro on the top to give it some color. And that's it. That's an English style curry with some easy to make rice and a little cilantro on top. And that's what the Royal Chef at Home is all about. Just making simple foods, but making them perfect, making all those flavors together so that you can make these dishes at home as perfect as I made them when I cooked for the queen. Perfection, because we have the formula. Absolutely. So Darren, what, what would make, what makes for a good chef? I think um, what makes for a good chef is uh, the passion. You've got to have passion uh, for wanting to cook, for wanting to get up every morning and, and, and want to go into the kitchen. I've been cooking now for over 30 years and, you know, cooking for kings, queens, presidents. And even now, you know, with eating royally, going into people's homes and cooking, I still have that same passion, that still wow. same drive to get up each day and say, I'm cooking today. It's Isn't exciting. Isn't that amazing? So I think passion, creativity is important to be creative and to come up with new ideas all the time. You know, we don't want to make the same dishes all the time. We want to come up with new ideas. We want to stay with what's new and, and what's modern and see what's what's happening around so the world. So are you always testing? Are you always testing new dishes? Do you always, always testing. read the, like, do you subscribe to the magazines with recipes and you test them out yourself? The internet's a great thing now, you know, for going to different magazine sites, going to uh, different websites. There's so many food bloggers that are saying, try this restaurant, try this dish. And you sort of take a look, you look at what's trending in different parts of the country, and then traveling too with my Royal Chef side, doing corporate events around around the world and speaking events. I get to try some amazing restaurants, you know, whether I'm in Singapore, Japan, New York, or, or, or over in England. I bet you probably get invited to a lot of executive events to either speak or even help with some of these, because we got a lot of entrepreneurs that follow the content here. You probably get invited to do a lot of private functions as well. well I, do, I do a lot of private functions, a lot of sort of corporate events. And for a lot of uh, clients, they want to say a thank you to, to their clients and treat them like royalty. And what better than sort of bringing in the royal chef and having me either come in and just do a presentation, uh, talk about my 15 years with the royal family, whether it's with a slideshow presentation or giving the recipes to the local hotel and letting them and working with them, let them prepare them. I, I do a lot of that. I enjoy that. I can speak from experience having you the other night here. People are still talking about it till today. Uh, well, really, people are still talking thank about you. it till today. So can we, can we, you know, have a deep dive in this food and actually taste it? Because I'm. I'm losing a little bit of patience if it's okay with you. <laughs> Absolutely, let's, let's dig it. in and okay. eat, yeah. By the way, the presentation is amazing right here, just looking at it, so I'm ready. But before we you know, dig deep into the food, is it fair to say that if I get trained by the royal chef, does that officially like indirectly make me a chef? Is that kind of qualifies me or? I think you've helped create two of my favorite dishes and certainly one of Princess Diana's favorites. Okay. So I say, yeah, you're a chef For too. the day. Welcome to the family. So, so you know what, I'm gonna go change my outfit if you don't mind. I love Is that. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. I'm gonna go my 
Whoa, Chef. What do you think? I love it. You, you like even it? got your name on yeah, there, too. Yeah, I, mean, I like this. this. By the way, this is from one of our value tenders. He's a chef, Chris Martin. He made this for us and he sent it to us. So, Chris, thank you for this gift. Now we're wearing it and I, I kind of feel like I'm qualified now. I think so. I, yeah. think it's, I think now we can both sit together at the chef's table. Yes. Now, now before we do, what do you suggest? I have friends that are big on, you know, this goes with white wine, this goes with red wine. What does this go with? Well, I always tell people, you know, drink whatever you want to drink. Okay. Don't be a sort of snob. Don't think, ah, I've got to eat white wine. I've got to drink white wine. I've got to drink red wine. I always say drink whatever you want. But when we're doing curries, the best thing is beer. And uh, we're in Dallas, Texas. Why not do some Shiner with this? You're a Shiner guy. I love Shiner. Okay. Uh, uh, Mario, do we have Shiner here? I think we do. Have Let's have Mario is a Shiner guy as well. Mario, why don't we grab some Shiner here for us? Okay, so here we have the Shiner. Mario apparently told us these guys have been brewing in, in Texas since 1909. Should be good then, right? Should be good. Let's do it. Did you okay. just twist that? I twist it. I work out, you know, five times a week. So you might do that. I can't twist that. These hands are my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Lamb curry. Okay. Rustic. Um, one of the easier to make dishes from the book. And that's what you know, the book was intended for, to make simple dishes that you can cook at home every night for every occasion. Lots more advanced dishes in there too, but save those for special occasions. Got it, beautiful. Okay, let's get into it, man. I'm so excited, hungry. Oh my gosh, it's delicious. Good, good, No joke, Thank it's you. incredible. That curry flavor really comes through, doesn't it? Because you're cooking that curry into the lamb, it makes a huge difference, and then with a little beer. It's a lot different than a Thai place down the street. <laughs> the next time I go there, I'm gonna say, I wanna go back in the kitchen and see if you got this sauce, because Royal Chef told us you're not doing it right. I think with your chef, you go back in the kitchen and teach them. That's right, because yeah. I'm a chef now, yeah. yes. Yeah. By the way, would you have ever guessed, like I would have never guessed Beer with curry, yeah. right? Yeah. Beer yeah. with curry. And then if it's too hot, it's milk. Because milk coats the tongue. You're being serious. Serious, yeah. And so that takes away the spice. See, the, my Middle Eastern friends got offended because there's no, they look for excuses to drink alcohol. So you tell them <laughs> milk. <laughs> right. Now, let me ask you, Darren. I mean, obviously, as a chef, I sat with Curtis Stone, a friend of mine from LA, runs a couple of restaurants for himself. I asked him this question, I'm curious what you'll say to it. How critical are you of chefs when you go to restaurants? Like, is your expectation, these guys better bring me good, like, are you very critical because your expectations are so high? That's a great question. And I always tell people that, you know, whenever I go out, I judge the restaurant, judge the chef on what I'm paying for the meal. So if I'm going to the French Laundry, uh, I'd better have a good meal. The standard had better be high. If I'm at a restaurant where my young kids can actually draw on the table and with crayons, you know, and they say, how do you want your steak? I'd just say, surprise me. <laughs> surprise me, because it's never going to come how I want it. So I, I'm not as critical. I don't expect sort of the, you know, the local burger joint to cook yeah. burgers as good as, you know, one of the top five star hotels, Michelin restaurants and things. Got it. Are there any restaurants that you like? Are there any like you two? I know you said the French Laundry, but is there any other ones that for you it's like top five? There are uh, so many. I mean, traveling all the time, you get to see some amazing restaurants. And I was recently, because I did host culinary trips too, and I do speaking events around the world. I was in uh, Italy and uh, in Modena, Massimo Batura, one of the most amazing chefs, probably the best chef in the whole universe. Really? You know, seeing his food. Traveling around the country, I mean, even in, in New York, ABC Kitchen, another one of my favorite restaurants. Here in Dallas, there's a restaurant called Gemma. It's a beautiful restaurant, it's small. Uh, I, I always find that dinner is always a, not just the food, it's the ambiance too. It's the, the music experience. and it's the experience. Hmm. And people often say, well, you know, I, I tried this at the restaurant and it was amazing. But when I got home and cooked it, it never quite tasted the same. And you cooked it as good, but you know, the washing machine's on, the kids want help with their homework, they're running around screaming, the TV's on. And so that makes a difference. It's the ambiance. So do you typically go out or are you more just like, I'm just gonna stay home and cook? What's, what's your mindset with that? I like the idea of going out, but my wife, Wendy says, uh, no, let's stay home, you cook. <laughs> Is she also a cook or no? No, she's, she's, she's not. she doesn't cook at all. She's perfect no, fit for you. I mean, you guys are like 
perfection she, right there. She just loves me to cook, and, and I just love cooking anyway. And so the odd times that, you know, she's cooking, she'll do food for her and the kids, and, you know, when I'm traveling and doing events, occasionally she'll cook things like spaghetti with bolognese sauce, and I'm in my office working away, and, and um, I'm listening to the cooking. And I'll say, uh, Wendy, I think your uh, spaghetti's ready. She said, how do you know? I said, well, because the, do you not hear the sound of the water? When the pasta's ready, wow. uh, the bubbling is louder. The science. And it is science, yeah, it is. So we talked about English and math. The science is important too. Unbelievable. So what's your favorite, all-time favorite? Like for me, I could eat sea urchin every day of the week for the rest of my life and overdose on it, right? Yeah, I, could, yeah. I could eat caviar every day for the rest of my life. I grew up in by Caspian yeah, Sea in yeah. Iran, so for sure. us it's like very special. Yeah. What is it for you? Do you well, have I am partial to caviar. I did like you caviar. You do like caviar? Oh, I love caviar. Black, yeah, black, yeah. legit yes. like caviar. Yeah, yeah, the real caviar, yeah. yeah. For me, it's Indian food. I love curries. I love all the that flavors that go into it. And for me to, this is one of my favorite chapters of the book where I talk about all the different curries, you know, with the Thai curry and everything. But for me, not only to eat Indian food, but to cook it too. I love the flavors that all come together. English food can be a bit boring at times. You know, it's just sort of the protein, the vegetables, the starch. Uh, but I like all those flavors that go into it. Let me ask you, so I automatically took the spoon and a fork. You only took the fork and you're lefty. Your spoon is still clean, you're keeping a spoon. So tell me about the etiquette here because I grew up in a family where we eat with the spoon and the fork. What, what happened here with you? We grew up in the UK, we have a knife and a fork. Okay. So we're using knife the both together. Yeah. I saw the spoon there and thought, I'm gonna get to the dessert before you. <laughs> 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 so that's what it is. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So in the UK, it's a knife and a fork, and we use them together. We don't sort of prop them on the side like they do in the US. You use we them sort together. Of work with them both together, yeah. like you are with the. Oh, well, listen. No one's perfect yeah. in UK. It's okay. We'll teach you guys eventually. There but you I go. Just, I just there thought for a second. <laughs> okay. So are we ready for this? I or? think so. Right. Let's do it. Yeah. So the bread and butter pudding. It's had time to sit okay. and relax. You see, it sort of relaxed down yes. a little more. Hopefully, when we cut into this, we'll have that liquid that we saw earlier mm -hmm. has gone into a beautiful, delicious custard. So when I lift this up. Oh my gosh. That beautiful custard at the bottom is all set. You can see why this was Princess Diana's favorite dish in the Makes world. Sense. But she'd only eat a small portion and then sometimes she'd come back for seconds. <laughs> and a few berries on there too. Yes. That's the healthy part of the dish. That's right. It makes you feel good at least, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. The smell, I mean, you smell it. I'm telling you, you smell it. So you want the crispy crunchy of that bread on the yeah. top, the bread and butter, uh, and then underneath, we want that sort of creaminess. And then the raisins with the amaretto really do come through with this. Here we go. Each bite is two miles on the treadmill. Good. Oh my gosh. Flavor, no joke. texture, everything. I'm not a dessert guy. This guy, this is, this is insane. Wow. Mm. Holy moly. Guys, it's terrible. I don't want you guys to try it. I mm. just want you to know it's, it's not something you should try. It's not healthy. I'll, me and Darren will take care of it today. Then they say it's fat free until you eat it. <laughs> mm. And those berries just break down the sweetness. You know, to me, it's weird. It's, it's almost a better bite if I don't have the berries. Right. Because right. I get the actual taste, the you, sweetness of it. And you've got the raisins in there. Yeah, the raisins yeah. really making it. I always tell people, once you've tried this, you'll never go back to the American style bread pudding. Oh my gosh. Now, let me ask you this. Does this go more with beer or more like a double shot of tequila? Which it's kind of, what would you recommend with this? <laughs> This one is actually goes really well with port, port wine, or something like um, a sweet white French one, like a Sauternes. These are wine. Yeah. Okay. So we do a wine with this. This, this one's a little bit more refined than sort of the curry. Where so how sort of often? How often would person, Princess Diana eat this? Was it an every probably about once a week? Really? Yeah. And then only a small portion. I mean, she'd only have a tiny piece like this. But it was just the taste of having it. Well, by the way, was she exercising all? Was she always like? Was she always part of a you know taking care of her health? She worked out at the gym three days a week. When I joined her, she got her life back on track. Uh, she conquered the bulimia in the hope that others would too. And uh, she was patron of 119 different charities. That's amazing to me. Though. I know That's it so really amazing. is. And she had that discipline. You know, she come back from an engagement 
and she'd come into the kitchen. And if she was on her own, she'd sit at the table like this and just eat lunch at the table. And she'd come in the kitchen and she'd say, Darren, I'm starving, what's for lunch? And I'd be like, uh, it's chicken, Your Royal Highness, but it's not ready yet, another 10 minutes. She said, oh, that's fine, I've got to go and write my thank you letters. So she'd go and sit down and write thank you letters to all the charities before she came back and had wow. lunch. So when I joined her, she got her life back on track. She was patron of all those charities and uh, working out at the gym. And she came in the kitchen when I first started there. And she said, Darren, I want you to take care um, of all the fats and I'll take care of the carbs at the gym. And so that's when my recipes changed. It, it became more sort of the, the healthier eating side for her. Have you ever watched her interviews? Like, do you sit there and watch her interviews and reminisce about your time with her? I've seen, you know, I watch the interviews and, you know, you don't have to look sort of too far back to see William and Harry now, those boys. And I still call them boys, but they're taller than me yeah. and they've got their own children and everything. But, you know, I think back to holding Harry as a baby and William coming in the kitchen uh, with Princess Diana and he was going riding on his, on his little Shetland pony, Smokey, and he's just sort of this high, can't see above the counter. And he said, Dan, can I get some orange juice, please? And, you know, those days, watching them grow up, seeing them come in the kitchen and seeing what they do now, you know, the, the charity work that both do and the work that Harry's doing and, you know, both, I mean, Princess Diana's looking down on those boys and she's so proud. I bet. Are you still connected with the family? Do you go back and visit every once in a while? I send them notes every now and again. Um, I sent them my first book when it came out. I've got to send them this one. I think they'll enjoy the recipes in there. Darren, are you a Twitter guy, Instagram? Which, are you active on one of those or no? Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of them. Oh, really? Yeah, I okay. love Twitter. Ready for a sleep now, I think. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am like in heaven right now. I'm telling you, this was amazing to me. So obviously you've been with Princess Diana, you've been with the Queen, you said Ronald Reagan, presidents, all these. But how about some celebrities? Like who were some of the guys, you know, some of the celebrities you cooked for and had experiences with? When I cooked for the Queen, it was sort of mainly kings, queens, presidents, okay. you know, all those dignitaries. When I moved to Princess Diana, it was much different. She, she was good friends with sort of George Michael, Elton John. And one day I was working in the kitchen, I got four people for lunch and the door opened and the boss walked in and she said, come and meet my chef. And she walked in and right behind her was uh, Gianni Versace. Behind him was George Michael and then Elton John following wow. up. And they walked into the kitchen and George Michael was just like, whoa, I love Diana, you eat this, Diana, you. And I just stood there looking, thinking, whoa, this is cool. Lots of celebrities uh, would come all the time to the palace, but you know, with moving uh, to Dallas, now I'm cooking for an incredible plethora of different people uh, and having so much fun. Is it more entrepreneurs now? Are you, are you, is it more, is it still some politicians, some business people? What are some of the mixtures you're seeing right now in Dallas? It's a mixture, politicians, business people, celebrities, flying around the country and, and, and the world uh, doing corporate events, lots of celebrities. We, I have my catering company in Dallas and we fly out, we'll load food on the plane and go out to Laguna Beach and up to Aspen and across to North Carolina and down to Florida. And the whole team sort of come along and give that royal experience to the client. Yeah, because so you brought your whole, whole team here when you were- We did. You, yeah, you brought the yeah, whole- Yeah, we did. And these were the way they treated the executives we had here was just priceless. As we said earlier, it's all about the whole ambience, it's not just the food and it's no good me being in the kitchen making something beautiful and then you know the servers just slapping it out so they're all trained we do everything from service at the table to uh, synchronized service but they're good at what they do my whole team are what was the biggest transition for you going from being a chef for the queen and princess diana to then wanting to you know you run your own business now yeah. What was that transition for you? I worked for the Queen for 11 years. I moved to Princess Diana for four and then uh, moved to Dallas and spent 17 years cooking for a family in Dallas as their private chef. And then decided, okay, let's go out into the real world and start my catering company. You know, it's tough starting a new business. It really is, you know, making sure you've got the right team around you and you've got to get sort of a place where you can prepare all the food. You've got to get the most amazing suppliers and ingredients. It's, you know, all of that all comes together and it's taken three years now uh, since I started eating royally and now we've got everything together and we've got an amazing team I think that you know every one of us wakes up every morning and, and wants to come to work and I always tell the team it's funny when we talk to people they say how many people work for you uh, I said nobody works for me they work with me the whole team work with me and I couldn't do 
my job in the kitchen without my servers doing an amazing job, without my team in the kitchen just washing all the dishes and doing all the cleanup. Uh, you know, I couldn't do it without that. We're a team together. A lot of times the criticism with chefs, not criticism, it's like the curiosity from other people who are not chefs like you and I, obviously, but no. people, people at your level of mm. chef, everybody thinks there's a madness side to them. They're yeah. like crazy. Yeah. You know, you see them on camera, they look normal, but then behind camera, these guys are insane, <laughs> intolerable. They're always yeah. losing it half yeah. the time. How much truth is there to that? You know, there is. I mean, you get chefs like that, but I mean, you get people like that in all industry too. We have those moments and the team will tell you, you know, at certain times you stay away from the kitchen, stay away from the chef. Don't come and ask where the napkins are when I'm getting a big meal on the go because I'm concentrating. But I grew up, you know, cooking at Buckingham Palace and any minute, you know, Prince William could come running into the kitchen. So there could be no sort of shouting and swearing and things like that. You had to be Discipline. pretty calm wow. and disciplined. Wow. So yeah. that helped. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, it did, yeah. Interesting, so that's good to know. Well, listen, if you're watching this and, and, you, and you obviously learned two formulas on what to make for yourself. One, if you're in the world and you like cooking, you gotta get this book here, we'll put the link below. If you're not in the world, but mother, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, somebody who enjoys cooking, buy a copy of that book and send it to them. And how about if we do this? How about if we do something where the copy that I have here, if you could sign it, and the first person that watches this and you tweet at he and I what your biggest takeaway was from today's interview, we will mail you a copy signed by Darren McGrady. Is that fair with you? Absolutely, if we do that? let's do that. Phenomenal. Yeah. So with that being said, Darren, thank you so much My for joining us here at the house. My thank you. This thank was phenomenal. You. By the way, go ahead and subscribe to the channel below. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.